Hey guys, this is Ryan with Mama on Mission and it is good to be back, finally. Um, I have taken a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I've just had a lot, um, not necessarily going on in my life, not any more than most people have going on right now, um, but I just kind of needed a brain break. I needed um, kind of a chance to process some things that were going on and um, catch up on some other things and YouTube just kind of had to take a back seat for a minute. So um, I'm hopefully back to posting twice a week again. Um, let me know as I get back to posting what it is you guys want to see. Do you want more homeschool stuff um, as we're entering into summer? Do you want um, content about curriculum? Um, I mean, what is it that you guys are looking for? Um, I mean, I have a couple things up my sleeve, but I've kind of been in a rut as far as content goes. So let me know um, what we can chat about. But I have officially been tagged by, I believe, two people now. Um, for sure, Katie at Life in the Mundane um, for the Finding the Good in COVID-19 um, video challenge or video tag. And this was posted a few weeks ago, so I am late to the game, um, but I just needed that brain break. Um, and so, um, this is all about, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to this virus. It's not just the virus itself. Um, there are so many political and economical implications and um, things about the government. And, you know, there's just so many um, sides to this that it can be daunting. It can be overwhelming. And so I believe that this tag was made up to allow people to just find some good and the bad um, and to see, you know, coming out of this, um, whenever that may be, um, to see, you know, how this could have an impact positively. Um, how could God use this for his glory is kind of how I look at it. Um, and so I just have one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe things um, that I know have changed within our home or within my heart even. Um, that I hope to carry on um, past COVID-19. And these aren't really um, real tangible, like easy things. They're kind of deep things and you'll see as we go on. But um, these are just the things that came to my mind when I thought about um, finding the good in COVID-19. So first off, this has helped me see that maybe we had some priorities wrong. Um, maybe we were spending too much time and effort in things and activities that really we didn't need to be in. Maybe we had, you know, too many things going all at once. Um, we were burning the candle at both ends for no reason. Um, and so I'm hoping that this will help us to continue to cut out that margin where it needs to be, um, both in um, our schedules and just, um, in a lot of different things and a lot of relationships and whatever because there has been just a lot going on and it has helped us see you know what we need and what we don't need um, and what is good for us and what isn't and so I hope to carry that out past this even when everything has opened back up whenever that may be and um, things go back to normal um, you know I hope to still keep those boundaries in place that we have um, seen the positive impact of. Um, secondly, I, this is more of kind of a concrete one, but I am so happy that we have been in nature so much more than we usually are. This time of year, typically we're in nature a lot. Um, we do love to hike. We do love to just play outside. I let my boys go dig in the dirt. We go fishing. We do all the stuff. Um, unfortunately we haven't been fishing, um, because my, um, we go with my grandparents and they obviously can't go out and about right now. Um, so that's kind of been a bummer, but um, we have been um, out and hiking and everything and even more so than we typically are this time of year. Typically we are doing all those things, but we're also doing, you know, the sports and the um, church meetings and the, you know, all this stuff, which I miss a lot of that, um, but it has been so good um, for us to still be in nature and to be in it so much more than we would have before. Um, and just, you know, seeing creation and, um, 
just being out in the fresh open air and, and I'm just glad that that hasn't been taken from us. Um, so another thing that I think that this has shown is kind of some idols in our hearts. And I think that this is um, true for a lot of people, whether they're willing to acknowledge it or not. Um, but the things that were taken away from us um, that, you know, we can't do any longer or can't do for right now, um, we've kind of seen, wow, I really was clinging to that. I really had a lot of security in that. I really loved that. And maybe I loved that too much, whether it be getting your nails done, whether it be getting your hair done or um, shopping or, you know, whatever your thing is, you know, maybe we've seen where we have held some things in higher regard than we should. Um, where we have put our hope and trust in things and activities and places instead of in Christ. Um, and I've caught myself in that several times. You know, I've found myself, you know, um, discouraged and even angry that, you know, I can't go to the lake with my grandparents right now. I can't, um, you know, there's different trips and stuff you're going to take that are up in the air right now. And that, um, I found myself angry at that and, is it a bummer? Yes, but like, it's kind of shown me like, is that your hope? Are those things your hope or is your hope eternal and in Christ? So um, I hope I can keep that um, perspective and that um, peeking into eternity always before me after this. Um, and another thing that I feel like we have gotten um, that is good from COVID-19 is um, I value people a lot more. And this is coming from number one introvert right here who is totally content staying inside my home with the doors shut for long periods of time. Um, but I am seeing how much I miss, um, and not just people in general, like an extrovert maybe just misses being around people in general. I don't, <laughs> but I do miss, um, you know, my grandparents. I miss my aunts and uncles and cousins. Um, my siblings, my parents, um, our friends are from church, from co-op, um, just those relationships. I mean, there's, yes, there's texting, there's calling, there's Zoom, there's all these things, um, but none of it takes the place of that hand-to-hand, -hand, face to face contact. Um, and I'm not even a touchy-feely person at all. I have a bubble and I don't like people in my bubble, but, um, you know, I drop some stuff up stuff off at a friend's the other day and she invited me in and just sitting there for a few minutes chatting like I was like holy cow I miss this a lot um and it was just like kind of an eye-opener for me like you know the Lord's revealed to me as an introvert the past couple of years that community is so important even if you don't feel like it's important and this just kind of drives that point home because I um miss my people I do um, let's see, I have two more. One, I am really thankful for the teaching moments that this, um, crisis has provided me with. I believe as parents, especially parents, um, who are trusting in Jesus and are leading your families in the way of the Lord, um, that it is so important to use, um, day to day things to teach your children. It is so important to watch the news and share those things with your kids. And I'm not saying, you know, this is something I have started, you know, since my kids were teeny tiny, we talk about current events, we talk about things. I am not saying that you need to lay it all out there for your three-year-old, okay? Um, there are certain things that they need to mature before they understand and, you know, have discussions about things. Um, but as things come up, we are just really honest with my kids and we tell them the truth about a lot of things and we expose them um, to not a lot, but you know, a decent amount of things because we want them to see things biblically. We want to see, have them see things through a um, gospel perspective and COVID-19 is a great way to do that. Um, you know, there are lots of, like I said, this is so, um, there's so many different angles to go about this. Um, so we've been able to talk to them about government and, um, you know, the boundaries of government. We've been able to talk to them about, um, wisdom. We've been able to talk to them about diseases and about, um, loving neighbor. We've been talking about, um, 
you know, economy and people losing jobs and, you know, whatever else. Um, it has just been such a good teaching moment and a time for them to, you know, even though we don't have all the answers because this is new and weird and no one really knows what's going on half the time, um, it's just a good um, tool to use to um, just kind of draw your kids in and go through these things together and think through these things together. Um, and last, um, and this is the biggest thing for me, um, I am seeing the importance of critical thinking. Now I've, again, um, thought about that and, uh, you know, have kind of dove into that side of things for a long time now. I think critical thinking is something we should all be doing. I saw a meme and I could not have agreed more. So there's like this little Venn diagram and it's like people worried about government overreach, people worried about the health of others, um, and people worried about the economy. And then in the middle is me. Okay, you can worry, you can be concerned, I won't say worry, you can be concerned um, about the virus itself and about its effect on people, especially the elderly. Um, and the immunocompromised, you can be concerned about the economy and about the people who are losing jobs left and right. You can be concerned about government overreach, about um, keeping the government in its place. You can be concerned about all three of those things. You don't have to plant yourself in one camp. Um, but what happens is when we don't think critically, we get in one of those camps and we just stand on that and no one can tell us otherwise, especially on social media when no one can really talk back at you. You like to be those keyboard warriors, you know? Um, and this has just shown me the value and the necessity of critical thinking. Um, if Facebook is your main news source, you got probs. If, um, you know, every single article you come across online is where you're getting your information, you got probs. Um, I don't know. It's if what the government says is your standard for what goes, you've got probs. I just seeing people who, um, for whatever, you know, whatever camp they're coming from, just ready to die on that hill. It's just so sad for me. Um, I think that, um, you know, we have to think through, okay, what is the government there for? Does the government um, work for us or is the government, do we work for the government? Um, does the government, is the government God or is the government put in place under God's authority and will they have to um, give an account to him on how they handled that? Um, you know, where, what's government's job? And um, when are you going to just, you know, say, despite what the government says, I'm going to use my wisdom and God's word and figure out, you know, what is best for my family. Um, and, you know, I saw um, something that Sheila Ogin shared and basically she said, um, it was talking about like basically live at peace with everyone. Um, but she was talking about like, if you're going to make trouble, make sure you're making trouble by being busy being a Christian. So making trouble just for the sake of making trouble doesn't help, doesn't get anyone anywhere, um, just makes you look foolish. But um, if you're busy doing God's word or doing God's will and living out his word and that causes trouble, okay. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, this is a time to think critically about um, health and about what a virus actually is and you know, balancing out the, um, you know, the risk versus, you know, the risk of someone getting sick versus the risk of someone losing their job. And, you know, there's just so many different sides to this and we have to sit and think for ourselves on this. We have to consult God's word. We have to, um, just think about these things with our brains and not with our emotions. And I know that can be so hard to do, um, especially if you have lost a job or you have um, lost a family member to COVID-19 or you have, um, you know, been in trouble with the government because your church met when they weren't supposed to or whatever. Um, it's hard not to rule with your emotions, but it is so, so necessary, especially as God's people um, 
you know, we're representing Christ. And to do that, we need to know what his word says to do in times like these, and we need to carry it out. Um, so coming out of this, all that to say, I hope that my family and all believers, well, everyone, but especially the believers, would see the value of critically thinking about using God's wisdom and not our emotions um, to make decisions from here on out, not just in the midst of crisis, but um, in the day-to-day -to -day too. So those are my things that I am hoping I walk away um, from this situation with. Um, things that are positive that came from COVID-19. If you have any, please share them down below. Um, and I will love to read those and interact with you um, regarding those. But I thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.